it's been some time since I've reviewed a horror film or TV series, but I am back, so bear with me, I might be a bit rusty. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about The Haunting of Bly Manor, and I've not really prepared my thoughts very much on it, but um, it's a series that affected me, and I've seen a lot of people sort of discussing the, the, the pros and cons of it, and I just wanted to kind of weigh in a little bit and hopefully persuade you to watch it if you if you haven't seen it. So The Haunting of Bly Manor is a, a limited series on Netflix. It's nine episodes, I believe, and it is an adaptation of the Henry James novella The Turn of the Screw from 1898, which is a seminal ghost story and it really created the modern haunted house template that many writers have then built upon since then and many filmmakers as well. It's hard to really make a haunted house film without something uh, being traced back to that uh, original Henry James story. So The Haunting of Bly Manor is an, is an adaptation of that, uh, updating it for a modern audience and also really interestingly I think bringing in some of um, some of Henry James's other short ghost story it's short ghost stories or novellas um as well uh that that people might not be as familiar with so i thought that was a really interesting idea it's it, it is technically season two of this show but each series each season is a standalone ghost story um the first season adapted the haunting of hill house um, by Shirley Jackson, the novel by Shirley Jackson, and that's one of I mean, people who have watched this this channel will know the haunting of Hill House, especially the nineteen sixty three Robert Wise film version of that is one of my favourite, if not maybe my favourite horror film of all time. Um, so they adapted that story for season one, season two it's Henry James this time. And some of the same actors have returned and it's headed once again by Mike Flanagan um, who is on this great run of uh, horror films and television projects at the moment. He's really, he's probably the, the, the foremost um, influence in modern cinematic horror at the moment, I think. And he's done some great stuff. So The Haunting of Hill House, the first series, set the bar can't even see where the bar is it's that high it was the best um one of the best pieces of horror television i've ever seen M moving frightening compelling and i'll do a video about that as well excuse the squeaky chair that one um it really was a tremendous piece of television and when you're doing a follow-up to something like that even if it's a standalone series or season or its own story you have one of two avenues you can go down the first is which is what a lot of people do with sequels they'll say okay more of the same we'll just do more of that even more you know more scares more uh, uh more heart you know heart-rending moments more you know they just try to up the ante it works occasionally but it's very hard to capture lightning in a bottle twice. We've seen this with the Star Wars sequels, but that's another uh, issue. And so, it's the second approach you can take with doing a follow-up is to say, we'll go in a different direction and explore other possibilities. So here you have two seasons of, a, of, of, of two independent horror haunted house stories. The Haunting of Hill House is, I would say, it, it absolutely is a, a ghost story and it's it's a horror series. It's a terror story. There are there are moments in that may have one of the best jump out scares of all time is in uh, the TV series as well. So people were looking for that when they went to watch The Haunting of Bly Manor. They wanted the same experience. And because they've taken a slightly different approach some people have been disappointed and that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video because I don't think people should be disappointed in it because I think it's great but it just takes a different approach 
And I would actually say that because of that, because they're standalone stories, you can watch them in any order you want. So I would say watch The Haunting of Bly Manor first because um, it will lead you into The Haunting of Hill House. You see, The Haunting of Bly Manor doesn't have the same... Uh, the same aim to scare it unnerves in places and there are some really creepy moments and it builds dread and there there are some scares there's no doubt but it doesn't feel like it's trying to terrify you like the haunting of hill house did it's more about the compelling relationship between the characters living in this country estate so like henry james's uh, the turn of the screw a lot of the same beats are still hit even though it's updated for a modern audience it's kind of set in the 1980s there's a wrap around where at the beginning where there's a sort of contemporary wedding it's the night before a wedding and one of the people there starts to tell a ghost story and starts to tell the story about what happened at Bly Manor in the 1980s and we see that play out and it's about a nanny who comes from America. She's running away from some terrible cataclysm in her life. We don't know what that is immediately. But she is seeing a strange figure and mirrors and reflections. We don't know if she's actually seeing it or if, if it's a ghost or if it's just the representation of this memory that she has. But she's fled America. She's come to... Uh, London I think but certainly England and she's looking for work and she sees in the newspaper that there's this advertisement that's actually been there a few times and it seems to be for the perfect sort of nanny slash school teacher job it's in a beautiful country estate in the English countryside you'd have the full rate run of this this glorious mansion you're only teaching two children and uh, it seems strange that they've had difficulty filling this post. So anyway, the nanny goes to uh, to the uncle of the two children and he interviews him. He's played by Henry Thomas. You may recognise him from E.T. He's actually in the first series of The Haunting of Hill House as well. That's something we'll get on to. Some of the characters are... are played by the same actors from the original series um, but completely disconnected from that and the nanny uh, figures out that the, the uncle doesn't want anything to do with the children really but he just wants to fulfil his responsibilities keep paying for the, the upkeep of the manor and provide people to look after the children so the nanny gets the job she goes to uh, this glorious uh, mansion in the countryside and there she meets the cook the uh, housekeeper and the gardener and between the four of them they look after the two children Miles and Flora and they start to realise that there's this ominous supernatural malevolence in the house and um, although much of the series they don't really click onto that a lot of it is that they think that there's a real issue with Miles and Flora and their kind of obsession with two people who used to work at the house one of which they know is dead and so that's the the kind of setup for for the the series I'm not going to go into sp to spoilers here and interestingly when I when I I saw some people's thoughts online and they said that when they watched Bly Manor, I read some reviews where they said, well, the, the first couple of episodes were really, really built the dread effectively and they were waiting for the scares and they never quite happened and they were disappointed by that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I, I actually felt the opposite, which was that I watched the series and in the beginning I was a little bit disappointed because I, I had that mindset as you do when you come from something like the, the Haunting of Hill House to watch The Haunting of Bly Manor that you're going straight into something 
that an extension of that and this wasn't and so I started to sort of feel like you know where's this going but really by about episode two or three I was like locked into the character relationships there's, there's so many great performances here um, and the, the, the everything about the TV show is, is just class to me the editing the 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 cinematography you know the, the sets that they've built um, are really f phenomenal for Inside the House and I think that that over time if you lock into those relationships you start to realise that this is it's a gothic romance tale in a lot of ways it's more about the relationships between between people and the love between people and there are several relationships that explore love both um, in the here and now and beyond the grave and and it's all about how love and the, when you love someone how that love can push you to extreme extreme behaviours and extreme actions and there are a couple of characters who do really terrible things because of love then there are other people who are paralysed by love they never tell the other person that they feel that way um, and then there are there's there's a character or two characters who are really set free by their love and able to 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 move past grief and trauma um, and then the the everlasting component of love as well is there and I think some people don't like that that's the underlying aspect of this that it's a love story but really you know modern ghost stories and certainly modern horror stories and, and horror films they come from gothic romance uh, novels and um, that's perfectly at home within the horror genre because horror owes itself to those tales set in castles and, and foreboding landscapes and there's a mystery and there's there's a a, 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 a ferocious romance between two people, maybe a domineering person, a passive person, and you know, there are all of these sorts of things. That's that. So that's absolutely at home in this sort of tale. Even if Henry James's original novella isn't as much about that, um, it's it's absolutely fitting. I think that they they sort of based the entire series around that, and I think again. Because Hill House was so frightening, and because this isn't as frightening, it's not as scary. But you, you, you know, people are disappointed by that. But you will, if you give yourself up to the story and you give yourself up to the characters, you will lose yourself in these performances. The actors are tremendous. A lot has been made about the accent because we have a number of American actors here doing uh, English accents and then I think we have an English actor doing a Scottish accent. So let me just weigh in first of all. The Scottish accent uh, is pretty good. It's pretty good. Maybe there's a couple of wee things sometimes where you're like, where's, where, where would this character come from? But I think it's a, I, I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good Scottish accent. And... Um, when it comes to a lot, some people have criticised Henry Thomas for his English accent, but it didn't bother me because, you know, I have a lot of family in England. I've spent a lot of time in England, um, so I'm pretty familiar with the, you know, the various regional English accents that you get. Here's the thing with Henry Thomas's accent is he's really it sounds like he's doing a kind of Duke of Edinburgh accent. And that's a very specific accent. It's not the type of English accent that you would meet in the street. This is someone who has loads of money and is essentially upper class, really. And comes from a different sphere of life than most of us would really come into contact with. And there would be a lot of airs and graces about that sort of thing. And especially even in the 1980s as some of that stuff was waning a little bit. You still had in the UK, anyone who grew up Earlier than that, we'll tell you about the 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 British, the BBC accent. You know, all the new the presenters and the newsreaders would all have this very, very, very specific uh, 
forget that accent, that was terrible, but very, very specific um, English accent that was kind of not real, but was kind of put on to be, to give it more, uh, to, to push it up as if it's got the authority of being in the sort of upper class and, and things like that. So, um, I don't like the class system, by the way, just before someone comments about that. I'm just saying that I think Henry Thomas's accent is actually, is fine, absolutely fine f for the part that he's playing. Um, and uh, I actually, I think he's a tremendous actor. I'm, I'm just delighted to see him in, in uh, other things. And he's worked now with Mike Flanagan a few times. And uh, he's always great. He's always great. Um, you know, growing up, watching you know the films from the 80s watching et and things like that it was and there was a a film i think he was in called the go kids or i think that was one of the titles for it there was a film in the 80s and it's that that, that film always stayed in, in, in my my head um so like it's just great to see him still doing great great work and and all all of the all of the cast are great if there are any, any if i have any criticisms of the series you know by the end of it i was just won over by the performances and by the writing and there is a plot hole there's one plot hole about the dynamic of how one of the ghosts works and um this isn't a major spoiler, right? But you might want to turn off. It's not really. It's not really a spoiler. So let's just say one of the ghosts that they see when they, if they encounter someone, they'll kill them. And there's there's the question of why hasn't you know? And this ghost sort of walks through the the manor at times. Why hasn't it encountered certain people before, who would have been there in the past? Uh, why is it all? Why is it all of a sudden happening now? And maybe that's not as fleshed out. But it's that's a nitpick. That's a really tiny nitpick. And uh, the only other thing I've seen people criticise because there's an episode. <clears throat> you see, with a haunted house story, you want to to explain what's happening. And there's some reasons this, I mean, now, now, so I'm known as a ghost, as a writer of ghost stories primarily, but I, you know, I write a lot of other genres as well, but that's really how I made my name as a writer initially. And, you know, writing ghost stories, when you're writing a haunted house story, especially people look for that explanation. They want that explanation for, you know, why is something happening in this localized place so if the location is kind of where the supernatural phenomena is occurring then there must be some reason why it happens there and doesn't happen over here and that's why implicitly people want that um they want the mystery to be revealed but sometimes if you reveal too much of the mystery you lose some of the impact of it and uh, if you don't reveal enough, sometimes people feel underwhelmed by that or shortchanged. I will say in the haunting of Bly Manor, you get a really good, there's a you get a really good explanation for what happens or why it's happening. And um, but the way they chose to do it was instead of they do kind of lace it throughout the series, but they have one episode that's dedicated towards that story. Um, and I've seen some people, you know not like that because they felt it was too i don't know exposition heavy or okay uh it didn't feel like exposition to me it didn't feel like like that it felt like well here's just showing you what's happened at the manor before and here's the explanation um and i actually thought that episode was really compelling um i thought it was excellent and so for me it worked but I understand why some people might have preferred that parts of that story were told throughout the series. And I can understand that as well. But it worked for me. Um, the only other criticism that I see some people... They talk about the sentimentality of Bly Manor. And some people talk about Hill House as well that way. The last episode 
of Hill House some people had a problem with because it was sentimental there was a sentimentality to it um, you either like that in the, the stories that you read or watch or you don't and there's no right or wrong answer to that some people have criticised some of the stories that I've written because they are sentimental in places but that's fine there are plenty of stories I've written that don't have that, but um, I, I will freely admit that I dive into sentiment uh, when I write. And so it's just, it, it's it's a kind of like or dislike in your storytelling. Um, I'm kind of the school of like someone like Ray Bradbury and his stories are just, most of them are laced with, with, with sentiment. And uh, for me, it's effective and it's moving and it works for me and, that's why I write stories like that sometimes. And I think in the case of Bly Manor and Hill House, it never came across as overly sentimental to me. Not at all. I mean, I, I cried at the end of The Haunting of Hill House and uh, I cried at the end of um, of, of Bly Manor as well. Um, actually, the bit that, that really got me was we find out that there's there's a character maybe that you grow to dislike and then you kind of get to see a little bit of their backstory and, and it's really moving. And that's what's great about both both series is that they explore the characters expertly. Um, and uh, they take a little bit of the a leaf out of Lost. Uh, you know, if you ever watched Lost, you know, you get to know characters in the present and then you maybe see some flashes of things that happened in the past and that's how we build up those stories and it's a really effective way to do a television really compelling as well so anyway the haunting of Bly manor i would suggest if you haven't watched it or the haunting of hill house i would recommend watching the haunting of Bly manor first because you'll build up to those real terrors of uh, the first series there's a lot if you're a horror fan and you're looking for some scares and you're looking for eerie storytelling, you still you should still enjoy the haunting of Bly Manor. It's still there. It's just to try and understand it that it's a uh, that it's that it is a supernatural mystery, but that it's a story about human connections more than anything else, both here and beyond the grave, and uh, there is terror in that. But um, thankfully, I think they didn't overload it with scares um and they got that balance uh right for me so what do you think did you enjoy the haunting of Bly manor if you watched it what did you think of it and um if you haven't please go and watch it and then come back here and let me know uh if you would like to follow me you can follow me on twitter and a bunch of other places i'll leave some connect uh, connections can't even speak properly i'll leave some social media stuff down below it's been a long time since i've done these videos but i'm back at it um so anyway, I'm going to go now. I've forgotten how to end these videos. So I'll just say <clears throat> goodbye.